Hey there YouTube, what's up? It's Bobby aka Paginator and I have for you today a book review. I think actually what I'm going to be doing today is gushing about a book while I'm trying to review it. I am going to talk to you today about House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This came in my Alcrate box uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was finishing up Priory of the Orange Tree, and then I had some other things that I had picked out to read, and this came up next. This, um, as I film it, is Monday of Labor Day weekend, and I've spent the whole weekend reading, I've finished a lot of things, and this I finished about five minutes ago. And so I had to hurry up and take a picture of it to post on Instagram, and now I'm ready to do my review. Holy cow, I love this book. I, uh, uh, in the calendar year of 2019, I've read about 160 books thus far. This is making my top five. Uh, it, it, yeah, I know words. Um, okay, so let's take a step back. What is this book about? Well, it is a retelling of the 12 dancing princesses which is a fairy tale that talks about 12 sisters whose dancing slippers are completely destroyed and the king orders more and then the next night the dancing slippers are completely destroyed and the king has no idea how those slippers are getting so worn down because his daughters aren't leaving the palace and so he kind of makes it a contest that the person who can find out, find out the mystery um, gets to marry one of his daughters. So that's the original fairy tale. This is a retelling of that with a twist, almost as if Edgar Allan Poe had written the story. Super creepy. Things happen and just... Yeah, okay, so our main character is Annalie. She is the sixth daughter out of twelve and unfortunately um, the mother passed away just after the twelfth daughter was born and after the mother's passing the four oldest sisters have also passed away in strange circumstances so when the book opens it is basically at the funeral of the fourth daughter Eulalie and Annalie is pretty sure that something has gone wrong because Eulalie was discovered um, having fallen from the cliffs into the sea and Annalie's pretty sure that someone pushed her and so she really is trying to figure out what's going on some of her sisters believe that their family is cursed some people just that know the family believe they're cursed and Annalie is pretty worried about that situation she wants to protect her sisters the three youngest sisters are called the Graces um, they're the littlest one is Verity and she's darling and and then there's triplets and then we have Annalie and Camille who are the two oldest out of the remaining eight daughters and the father has remarried when this story begins and at the sister's funeral the stepmother takes it upon herself to announce that she's pregnant with a son little bit day class A if you ask me but they kind of decide that they're not going to spend the usual six months in black morning clothes and another six months in gray half morning and they're just going to jump right back into colorful clothes and things because they've had so many deaths in their family and they're ready to be festive and the triplets 16th birthday is coming up and as they're ordering all these fancy new dresses with bright colors and things they order some special slippers, which they call fairy slippers. They're supposed to last through a whole season of balls and dances and everything. And how much do I want to tell you? Mm. Okay, so with the younger sister's birthday celebration, of course you're going to have young men coming into the party and and Camille, who's by now the oldest sister and therefore the heir to the estate of Highmore, where they all live, um, and knowing that she's going to be the future duchess, she's really on the lookout to find a good man to marry. And then Annalie, of course, being the second in line, is mindful of that as well, but really wants to... 
focus more on finding the mystery of what's going on with her family rather than being so focused on relationships. However, she does meet um, a young man who's quite dashing when she's out doing some investigating, and his name is Cassius. And he turns out to have some secrets of his own. Um, we also have Fisher, who kind of grew up with the girls, and he kind of has a thing for Annalie. And so there's a little bit of, you know, lovey stuff going on. Um, but beyond that, there's a lot of creepy stuff going on. Um, hmm. I'm struggling with how much to tell you. Okay, let me just say this. There are some ghosts perhaps involved with this, some perhaps gods, demigods, tricksters, mythological characters. There's a lot of creepy happening and there's a couple of scenes that are a little bit bloody gory. I don't think I can tell you anymore without like majorly spoiling, spoiling the story. What I really, really want is to find someone else who has read this so that I can just grab them by the shoulders and go, are you in love with this as much as I am? Because I am loving, loving, loving this book. And because I have the Alcrate Special Edition, it's got the slightly different cover. And because I love this so much, I'm like, do I take it to school and let the kids check it out? Or do I order a separate copy for them to use? Or what do I do? Because I want to pass this on to them. Maybe I'll just let them borrow this one and only trust kids that are really nice to books I don't know but anyway I really want people to read this so I can talk to them about it and see if they figured out like some of the the, the secrety things the mystery things as they read like uh, the way that I did like if we had similar prediction processes as we were reading do you know what I'm saying I kind of feel like I'm blabbering ah I need to calm down I'm a little bit worried that I'm gonna go into a slump when I try to pick up my next book to read because I have been so in love with this book and it did take me I don't want to say it was slow going into the first half I just I didn't read the first half as quickly as I read the second half I raced through the second half because I could not stop reading like I haven't really eaten anything today I haven't really done anything you can tell but by, by looking at my hair it's a total mess I've just been caught up in this book so, yeah, that's what's going on in my world is this book. Um, gosh, so I'm going to have to go read something completely different just so that I can prevent a slump or something. Because I'm going to have a serious book hangover from this one. I'm going to be thinking about these characters for a long time. And, oh, I don't even know what else to say. If you're thinking about reading this one, I highly, highly recommend it. It's, oh, it's it's so good. <laughs> I just want everyone to read it. <laughs> and I'm going to stop freaking out now and being a weirdo because I can tell I'm being kind of weird in this video and yeah, it's time for me to go. <laughs> Maybe I need a nap. All right, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and wrap up now so that I can stop rambling and being an idiot. All right, so have a wonderful and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.